Regardless of your status or geographical location, rice is a vital food in diets around the world. But do you know how this tiny grain gained such a giant food profile? Learn more as we revisit In the Know, all about rice. Rice, you eat it all the time. Whether it's in your sushi or just in a big bowl covered with butter, this handy grain is the culinary heart of many a culture. But have you ever thought about where it came from? In this installment of In the Know, you're gonna learn all about the little bits of grainy stuff, including the history of its cultivation and usage in different parts of the world. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn some things. Webster's Dictionary defines the word rice as the starchy seeds of an annual Southeast Asian cereal grass that are cooked and used for food. Wait, what's a cereal grass? No, no, that can't be it. Ah, wait, it's a type of grass that grows kernels on top of the stalk. That makes more sense. There are of course many parts of the world that grow rice. We could get into all the places, but we'd be here all day and really, who has time for that? Let's start with China. Rice goes back to about 10,000 years ago. As the ice age began to melt away and transition into the current geological period we know today, a group of hunter-gatherers near China's Yangtze River began changing their way of life. They started growing rice. Eventually, it became domesticated and spread to all parts of Asia. By the time of the Zhao Dynasty in 1100 BC, rice had not only become a dietary essential, but it had become an economic staple as well, and has remained that way for centuries. China is currently the world's largest producer of rice, making up 30% of the global rice population. That's a lot of rice. Rice is also woven into the fabric of Chinese culture. At the time of the Qin Dynasty in 221 BC, rice was used to brew wines for celebrations and offered as a sacrifice to the gods. Guess that's better than using humans. China still uses rice for important milestones and holidays. For example, rice is a central part of the Chinese Lunar New Year's Eve dinner. Chinese families will make a cake called gao, which is a steamed sponge cake that turns flour into lovely glutinous rice. Families eat these particular cakes in hopes for a better future. Maybe we could all use a little gao in our lives. You may have never thought of Italy as being mysterious, but how rice got to the boot of Europe? Well, that is a mystery. Hmm. There are many ways rice could have arrived in Grand Old Italia. Rice could have been brought by crusaders or from Middle Eastern travelers in Sicily. Or maybe Venetian merchants brought it back from India. Or it could have been brought by an army of aliens looking to barter for pasta. Just kidding, I made that up. Whatever the case, rice is important to Italy in terms of cuisine and in economy. And Italians were actually pioneers of the rice making game. Although rice goes way back in this country, the most important period for Italian rice cultivation started in the 19th century, when the farmers of the province of Vercelli came together to open one of the most effective irrigation systems in history. They built a well, which flooded the fields to protect crops from extreme temperature changes between day and night. It was a ton of work, but don't worry, they got a canal later. Go Vercelli! Today, Italy is the largest producer of rice in all of Europe. Italy produces around 1.3 million tons of rice each year, 53% of which are exported to other European countries. The regions of Lombardy and Piedmont are known as Italy's rice bowl. The most popular delicacy is a little rice dish you might know and love, risotto, which is part of Italy's national heritage, a significant product in the Italian economy. Risotto usually is preferred as the first course over pasta. In Venice and Veneto, risotto with sautéed eels is served as a traditional Christmas meal. In hearing all about how rice got to other countries, you may be asking yourself how it got here in the U.S. of A. Well, like many things in life, it happened by complete accident. In 1685, a ship was heading to Madagascar. Where was the ship from? No idea. But it had just undergone some trauma from a storm and hobbled itself into Charlestown Harbor, located into what was known as the Carolina Colony. Being the gracious folks they were, the colonists took the ship's crew in and even helped them repair their ship. To repay them for their kindness and hospitality, the crew gave a local planter a small amount of golden seed rice. Quickly, the colonists realized the marshlands and rivers in the Carolinas and in Georgia were perfect spots for growing this new and multi-talented crop. By the 1720s, the area produced 4,500 tons of rice. And when America finally gained independence from those silly Brits, rice became one of the major agricultural businesses and fueled the economy of a new nation. From its humble beginnings in the Carolinas, rice has become a major agricultural product in the U.S. Nearly 90% of the rice consumed here is actually produced here. 
And it's not only used for our food, but it's also used for brewing beer, making pet food, and of course the occasional snap I drop my phone in the toilet incident. Don't worry, we've all been there. So the takeaway, rice is important to humans. Not only is it extremely versatile, but it also helps sustain two thirds of the world's population. And it's also a part of all of our cultures. I mean, what would you throw at weddings if rice didn't exist? Beef jerky? Ew, gross. So the next time you venture down the rice aisle at your local grocery store, think about the people, places, and events that made this multifaceted grain what it is today. For more In The Know's and other amazing content, like and follow the local scene on Facebook, Insta, and Twitter. This has been In The Know, all about rice. Now you're in the know. Hi friends, if you like this video by The Local Scene, share the love and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe.